Hey everyone. And so I showed this tin in a previous video, which was about cheaper dupes for some of my favorite Daniel Smith paints. If you haven't seen that one, I'll um, put a link here. I highly recommend it. And yeah, some of you wanted to know how I filled this palette. Now I know currently um, you can't get this everywhere. I ordered mine from a shop in Vienna, in Austria. I'm pretty sure that this will become available soon. And I don't know if other brands make this palette. It's not exactly like the, um, the ones that I'm used to. So this is kind of the size that... Uh, that I'm used to. I don't like the, these are the 12 full pans or 24 half pans and I use these all the time. This is one of my current go-to palettes. It's from Paul Rubens but it's filled with Van Gogh paints and this is a size I really really love and then there are the same kind of like standard tins that are bigger that house 24 full pans or 48 half pans those are too big for me too bulky and I just I don't use them even I don't think I need 48 paints well maybe I do but I don't like the big palette so this is somewhere I guess in between um, it's a little bit bigger than the 24 but not by much and then it is a little bit thinner so it does feel a bit uh, sleek so like nice to hold it's kind of more yeah compact and everything um, you can get this full of white knight paints but I have plenty of white knight paints so I just ordered the empty one and yeah and I filled it with a combination of my favorite white knights and uh, the Roman Aquarius colors so White Knights are made in Russia and then the Aquarius ones are Polish and I suspect that they use similar methods because the paints are very similar. The experience of using them, the formula feels very similar to me. And also they are mostly uh, available in full pans. So it kind of made sense to me to make a palette out of them. Now the only problem with that is that the White Knight pans are I'm telling you so you know if you want to do the same thing the white knight pans are slightly smaller than the regular Aquarius ones and so if you are using these just for white knights they will fit more than what I was able to fit so I was able to fit seven full pans in each row um, that makes 24 in total, 28 in total. <laughs> High school was a long, long time ago. <laughs> um, 28 in total. <laughs> and if you uh, used just the White Knights paints, I suspect that you could fit eight in each row and that would make it 32. So that means you can get a lot of paint into this uh, palette. Now, the first thing I did when I received this is I dropped it on the floor, not on purpose. <laughs> it just fell. <laughs> so it's a little bit, so I think that's why um, here, I don't know, the hinge is a little bit, it's like it catches the edge when I open it, but I think it was my fault. I don't think it's the, the uh, tin because it looks really nicely made, like very sturdy metal. Uh, you can see there's only this one area of mixing, but I don't mind this at all. This is the most compact, convenient way that I've seen till now to house so many full pans. And uh, I really, really like it. I also manage, I do a lot of my color mixing kind of on my brush. As I pick a paint, I'll pick it from several pans and with the large pans that's a lot easier because you can kind of designate one area of the pan to be you know dirtier and then still have kind of cleaner paint in the rest of the pan so I'm really really enjoying it I've been using this a lot ever since I set it up which 
true was only last week but I paint <laughs> pretty much every day for several hours so I have been using it a lot I also find it so much better than the um, boxes that I have seen from both of these brands uh, I'm sure there are other options but this is what I have I know white knights now have uh, more metal palettes metal tins for their paints which I think is fantastic because that's my preferred uh, type of box so this is the the Aquarius box and while it's really nice to have a lovely wooden box I think it would be a nice present for me it's not really a box I enjoy using it's very very bulky it will only fit the um, um, the Aquarius pans and also they kind of fit very snugly so if you want to move them around take them out um, you can do it but it's it's just a bit too much fuss for me and um, yeah and then there's no mixing area you could paint this white or I don't know glue a piece of like laminated white paper and have it but you know you have to like do stuff and adjust it or something and yeah, so not my favorite box. It's a very nice presentation of the paints, but I really, I, I don't use it and I don't really enjoy it as kind of a working palette. Now with White Knights, this is kind of, this set uh, was originally the 36, this houses 36 full pans of White Knights paints. For me, the 24 full pan set of white knights that come in this box is one of the best value for money sets for beginners that want artist grade paints i think they're a fantastic value however the the box is huge so if you have a large area and if you like to have a lot of mixing areas this is great i mean you really get a lot and you can remove this part very very easily and then it's not that bulky the box still closes with uh, without this so you don't need it you could definitely just remove this part um, but it doesn't fit all pans this one is what are you this is a Windsor and Newton uh, full pan and it kind of fits but then I'm not sure you could fill the row with it here and then other full pans uh, don't necessarily fit in which is a recurring problem a recurring problem with plastic boxes uh, they are lighter than metal but for that reason I don't like them because I like to mix around my paints and I all the time make like custom palettes and I mix brands and so the plastic tins, the plastic boxes are limiting. Um, yeah, so this, I haven't used it as kind of a working palette for a really, really long time. I mostly use my metal tins. Uh, so I would say if you find this kind of too bulky or you like to mix brands, um, then this will be a, an upgrade. I really, really like this. I highly recommend it. And what I'm going to do now fast for you is to swatch the colors that I chose. Again, I keep changing these up. If I see that I have a palette for, you know, a few weeks and I don't use certain colors, I will um, change them for something else. The way I organize this palette is the top two rows are the kind of intense bright colors. Then this row is mostly... Um, kind of granulating colors and uh, the cobalts and then here I have a few greens so I guess you could say this is like a more earthy um, neutral dark row that's how I organize them and I think it works really well for me this way instead of just like going kind of rainbow over the whole thing this uh, works well so I'll show you the colors that I chose I really don't know the name of most of them but um, yeah you can see the kind of color palette that I went with and this is more than enough I've been using this and I think the only thing that I'm missing here is kind of my favorite Naples yellow this is the the Aquarius Naples yellow and it's very nice but I am kind of obsessed with the Schminke one 
um, which is here. It's a little bit dirty because I've been painting with it, but it's you can see also in the pan that it's a, a lot more um, kind of yellow buttery, and this is more on the orange side. So I I kind of feel like I need this in every palette. My Naples yellow. And other than that, it's it's pretty good. It's pretty good. Uh, I think I'm. I think it's a it's a good um, color choice for me. So I'm going to swatch it quickly for you, so you can see all the colors. And I thought I would speed this up a little bit. And yeah, I'm just going to swatch this. Um, you can mute me if you're not interested in the explanations and I will try and write below the colors but I have you know certain colors that I'm particular about and then others that I don't really care which versions I have uh, I started with yellows I wanted the lemon yellow even though it's a color I don't use much and hardly ever use on its own uh, I do think it's handy in mixtures but yeah I'm just I don't use that a lot and then I really like a very kind of warm yellow something like um Indian yellow or New Gamboge, that's like the kind of yellow that I like. Then we have Naples yellow, which which could have also gone to the um, third row, but I just didn't have space there. Then we have some sort of an orangey red. That's the only red I like to use. I don't need oranges in my palettes. I don't like ready-made oranges and usually just mix my own. I also don't use a ton of oranges in my paintings. Uh, then we have something like, I don't remember how Aquarius calls this color, but it's very similar to quinacridone coral. Then a couple of uh, pinks, quinacridone pink, and then a slightly more purplish version of it. Um, then on the second row, we have this nice kind of red violet. The color next to it is something like a dioxazine purple, which I actually removed um, shortly after making this. I don't like that color. I hardly ever use it. If I need such purples, I just mix them from my blues and pinks. Uh, then we have, I think that one is Mineral Violet. I mentioned it in another, in my previous video. Uh, something that is slightly more purplish to Ultramarine. Then we have Ultramarine, Cobalt, Blue, and some sort of Quinacridone Turquoise, like a very, very intense turquoise. And then that third row has my Cobalt, Steel, Turquoise, and then the bottom row has some of the greens and earth tones. I'll write it all below and you can check it out if you're interested. Thanks for watching. Bye.